Item 5, Presentation on Clothing and Fabric Sustainability. Uh, Vice Chair of the Stain Sustainability Council, Albert Pothan, uh, will introduce this item for us. All right. Good evening. So today we're going to talk about some of the challenges that we see in sustainability of clothing and fabrics. Uh, name is, my name is Albert, Albert Pothan. I, I was going to say, I don't want to cut you off, Albert. You might want to speak into the mic a little bit louder. Okay. It's a green light on, first of all. All right. Good evening. Uh, name is Albert Potan. Green light is on. Okay. Um, today we're here to talk about fabric sustainability and some of the challenges that we look at from an environmental sustainability. Uh, so when we look at the industry study show that textile industries is a significant contributor uh, to the global economy, creating millions of livelihoods across the world. In doing so, uh, it does present some environmental challenges. And so really this presentation is designed to uh, cover certain elements. First element that we're gonna look at is carbon emissions associated with the garment industry. Uh, second element we're gonna look at is microfiber release into the environment and how those microfibers are released based on the clothing and manufacturing processes. Uh, we're gonna look at garments and landfills and the effects that these garments and landfills have. We're gonna talk about some of the challenges that are associated with recycling of garments, especially uh, newer blends and newer, newer fiber uh, orientations and materials. We're gonna look at the re some of those roadblocks in a little bit more depth in regards to that recyclability. And we're all gonna talk about what we can do at a local level, who can act to reduce emissions and waste productions, and tips that can be used by citizens to help reduce overall impact. So first thing we want to look at is overall data regarding carbon emissions. And um, when we look at the fabric industry as a whole, we're looking at the fabric industry produces about 4% of global carbon emissions as a whole. And uh, when we break that down, that's about 1.2 million metric tons of carbon dioxide that is emitted from that manufacturing industry. When we look at the industry as a whole, by 2030, uh, they will produce about twice what is allowable under the Paris agreements for CO2 emissions. So the industry itself, when we look at these CO2 emissions, there are some primary factors that look at it. First thing is we look at is in a cycle of manufacturing production, uh, many of our modern blends use a polyester fabric to, uh, in that fabric material. Polyester, of course, is produced by petroleum. So you have some of those CO2 emission sources with uh, with that production of the oil and transferring that oil into a polyester blend. Then once we get into the manufacturing cycle, you have energy costs associated with the manufacturing of those garments, including uh, overhead electrical, gas, running equipment. And also when we look at CO2 emissions in these calculations, it actually considers transportation um, emissions also by the workers that actually will run those manufacturing facilities. So you have that component to it. Then after that, you actually will also have the transportation cost and associations there and that CO2 emissions from that value stream. And then once it gets from that transportation, wherever those transportation locations are domestically or internationally, we get into the, the retail sector of actually selling those products. So when we look at the, the fabric industry, it's not only just that manufacturing component, but it also looks at all those upstream and downstream sources too. And that's how this value is calculated. So let's take a little bit closer look at some of the environmental components. When we look at that uh, sustainability clothing and the manufacturing po uh, process, polyester, of course, as we know, is made from fossil fuels. About 65% of clothing that is now used in modern fabrics contains polyester. Uh, and that uh, production of polyester consumes about 70 million barrels of oil per year. And additional fossil fuels are also um, tied to inputs such as packaging, hangers, and such. With the polyester fabric, we also have uh, potential for microfiber releases. Microfibers will occur when synthetics are washed. These microfiber plastics will release or shed from that fabric into the wastewater. 35% of microfibers found in the ocean are coming from fashion industry, and garments disposed in landfills can also shed these microfibers. 
So studies, uh, one of these studies uh, produced by Patagonia, estimate that for every 100,000 people, up to 110 kilograms of microfibers would be released daily into local uh, waterways, which is the equivalent pollution of about 15,000 plastic bags. So let's talk about landfills a little bit. When we look at landfills, the main source of textiles in our municipal solid uh, waste for the United States is discarded clothing. Although there is other smaller sources from furniture, carpet, tiles, shoe wares, and other non-durable goods. Landfills receive about 11.3 million tons of uh, municipal solid waste textiles in 2018. That was a 7.7% of all landfills are coming from these clothings. So what are some of the challenges? A as an industry, we know the industry provides wealth and well-being for many individuals and many companies. But there are challenges that the industry are going to face. First one is, like we said, the current industry uses a high blend of synthetic non-renewable resources for those fibers, going back to polyester, which is produced from polyester. Average consumer now buys 60% more items of clothing than in 2020, but each garment is kept for half as long. So we're buying more, we're keeping it for less period of time. Buying habits contribute to about 39 million tons of post-consumer textile waste that is generated at a minimum worldwide each year, primarily in that form of garments. With that, we also see the lifespan of these garments being in the range of two to 10 years with underwear t-shirts lasting just one to two years while suits, coats last for four to six years. So we're seeing the increased buying habits. We're also seeing a decrease in the usability and length of those uh, garments. Also, if we look in the challenges side, the United States recycling rate for all textiles was about 14.7% in 2018 with 2.5 million tons uh, recycled. That compares to paper and glass and plastic bottles, which all have a recyclability rate of 66, 27, and 29 percent, respectively, in the United States. So clothing is clearly lagging behind in the recyclability standpoint. So what are some of these roadblocks when we look at the recyclability of clothing? Uh, we've kind of already alluded to it. One is these modern blends. Um, less than 1 percent of clothing right now is recycled to make new clothing. Modern garments, like we said, are blended with multiple different types of fabrics. Uh, this makes it very difficult to separate them to be effectively recycled. Also, sorting textiles into different fibers or fabric, excuse me, and material types is labor intensive, slow, and requires a very skilled workforce. Mechanical fiber uh, recycling actually will reduce the fiber length of products, producing a lower quality material. This is what's referred to as a downcycling. So much of today's fabrics and garments that are recycled are downgraded into a lower grade material that is used for insulation uh, as an example. Also, most of today's textiles to textile recycling technologies can't separate out dyes, contaminants, or even combination of of fabrics such as polyester and, car and cotton. So what are the opportunities to reduce? There, there are several ways that we can look at. From a brand and retailer level, we can look at that cycle of production. Uh, so brands and re uh, retailers can actually influence uh, across their company looking at their core values, looking at ways to reduce that global carbon footprint at those individual stream levels. Factory material producers and upstream players can be fully involved and committed to decarbonization pro programs. But there's also things that citizens can do. When we look at the challenges that we have, there are things that each one of us can do to help reduce this impact. First thing is we can reacquaint ourselves with the garments that we currently own. One survey found that 20% of clothing in the United States is never worn. Second option that you can look at is going secondhand. Secondhand is an easy, affordable way uh, to be more sustainable. It reduces and it's also much cleaner than recycling because you don't have the energy inputs into that recycling program. Shopping secondhand can also be an excellent way to afford higher quality clothing that will last longer and have a higher resale value, creating a cycle of sustainability. Also, 
we don't want to leave out the human element of environmental commitment. And a, a sustainable society takes people, animals, and planet all to work in tandem. Fourth element that we could look at is know how to properly care for your clothing. Many of the modern fibers that are used in clothing, if we don't wash them properly, that'll cause them to break down, shed fibers, and cause damage to those clothing at a much higher rate. So extending the life by understanding how to properly wash and care for your fibers is a big element. And the fifth one that we could look at is donating or consignment of reusing for reuse of clothing. There are several local resources that can be used to enhance the longevity and thus increasing the sustainability of the clothing. So when we look at local options, there, there are several options here in our community. Uh, these can include Goodwill of the Great Plains, Brookings Domestic Shelter, local places of worship, Salvation Army of Brookings, and Share the Warmth, which has an annual run for winter clothing. So with that, questions that you all may have. Thank you, Albert. Any questions or comments? Bonnie? I'm wondering if this, um, when you were doing your research, if you ran across any like public service type slides that perhaps could be put on the city website that could help get this message out? You know, when I did my research, I did not see anything from a public uh, standpoint. There are a few organizations uh, in the United States, I believe there's one in, Min in Minnesota that have uh, some material that's produced, but it wasn't through a or uh, government organization per se, but they have uh, um, organizations that will take uh, clothing and donate it as such. But I did not see anything from local governments, but I didn't also dig that no, deep I into mean it. like a slide that summarizes some of this information oh excuse me um to educate the public you know i i didn't really find one source that gave all those individual inputs looking at the stream of uh production and the inputs from there to what local citizens can do i didn't see anything of that nature I'm not saying that we couldn't create one uh for our community but i didn't find one that was had all that information yeah, I think it would be nice if there was maybe one or two slides that just maybe summarizes the issue and then what can be done locally mm -hmm. that, you know, Chelsea might um, be able to help with to get onto the city website to help educate the citizens of Brookings. Mm -hmm. De definitely, definitely agree. Cause the one thing you'll see is there's a lot of information out there and getting it into a centralized slide or communication points would be very helpful. Thank you, it was interesting. Yep. You bet, Dr. Spector. So Jake might wanna add to that. Yeah, we can certainly make uh, the slide deck that was presented tonight available on the city website as well as the report that was put together by Sustainability Council as well as potentially even the clip as I believe this is being recorded. So we can make this uh, all this information right here available on the city website. That would be great. Yeah. Reed, do you have a comment? Yeah, um, I was just gonna say, I really appreciate this data and this information. So to bounce off of what um, Bonnie said, are you planning to do like any public education campaign with this, with the Sustainability Council? Like any partnerships or where would you like this information spread out? That's a great question. Uh, we wanted to get this material developed in, uh, in front of you all from the board to maybe look at some of these potential options to go forward in providing more additional information to the citizens. So I, I think there's a, a lot of good opportunities that we do. We haven't decided on one method yet as, as a uh, sustainability council. Okay, Holly. Um, I'm wondering if in your research, in addition to um, educational campaigns, if there's any examples you found of communities that are kind of taking the next step maybe from a council uh, level or perspective um, to help address some of some of this uh, besides that that educational component you know that's also a great question uh, we didn't get into that level of research yet but it definitely could be something that we add on as a continuation to the this project we kind of first step was to look at understanding the scope and the the challenges were there and then potentially running from there to looking at uh, additional educational options but that could easily be something that we continue this research on. 
That would be wonderful. Thank you for the research that you've already done. I think it's great even just this presentation to get that information out to the public. But if there are ways that we can further support kind of combating um, this issue that, that's a sustainability issue, I think that we would be um, definitely willing to listen to potential ideas. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay.